We're back after that very short break. Thanks to Tab Touch. Alex Witherden joins us in the studio now. You've been, uh, mate, you've been on a tear. You got to go on one of your favourite podcasts of all time this year, Back Chat. Yeah. But you really just, um, you <clears throat> the bed a little bit on that one. So a big long time fan. <laughs> would you would have built it up being like, oh, I can't wait to be on one of my favourite podcasts. And it didn't quite come to fruition, mate. What happened on that one? Yeah, I had a coughing fit uh, about 10 minutes in and being a 50-minute podcast, it was pretty hard to overcome in that time. What'd you have to do? Uh, we took a few little intermittent breaks. Um, I drank a lot of water and I embarrassed myself for 20 minutes just coughing into the mic. Wait, sorry. I, I don't know about this. So you went on Scoey's back chat. Yep. And is the episode out? The episode's out, yeah. Have you listened back to it? I don't like listening to myself talk, so yeah. it was hard to do, but I did I did skip to the bit where I knew I was coughing and it just it gave me the ick. Like yeah. just sitting there oh. listening to it. Yeah. You could just hear it was always there. Like yeah. you just wanted to clear it all the time. Felt for the man. Or I, it sounded like I was talking without breathing. So oh. <laughs> because I knew if I took a breath I was gonna cough. So uh, I was really forcing my words out by the end. What do you listen to otherwise? Back chat aside, you listening to us? Uh, not really, no. Yeah, mm. fair call. Mm. Yeah. It's, what a, well, it's funny your response we get that from pretty much everyone <laughs> in the fine group, isn't it? <laughs> what, what do you listen to? Though? Um, I, I listen to like Dylan Friends, a bit of Howie Games. Um, Just the better versions of us. Yeah. I, I mean, you get a lot of the boys in, so I, I see them every day. So I like listening to different stories. <laughs> yeah, it's the guests. Um, it's not us. It's, it's, it's the not guests. us. It's yeah. not you guys. It's the guests. That makes a ton of um, sense. But yeah, Hamish and Andy, um, that sort of stuff. Do you listen to much of your man, David Goggins? I have listened to a David Goggins three-hour-long podcast before. Yeah. I think it was Joe Rogan, maybe. Yeah, that's why is he your man? Are you on his oh. fitness regime, are you? Good well, story. Yeah, la- last off-season, um, obviously we finished the year, had shoulder surgery, um, just got out of hospital, was looking for a bit of motivation, read the Goggins book. Um, and it just became like a running joke that I was David Goggins in the off season because I, uh, I went pretty hard and is this part of being the running club that you yeah joined on? joined a running club. Um, who was that? Who was in that? Uh, Peter Bowl was, wasn't he? <laughs> nah, Peter Bowl wasn't part of the group that I ran with, but he runs with a lot of the runners that I that I was running with. Um, oh, so this isn't with teammates. This is just random. Hey, you going? Nice to meet you. I'm Alex. Can we run together? Uh, no, it's that they're, they're like semi professional runners, so they do competitions on the weekend and um, they're like a little team within a team. It's actually a little company called Front Front Runner, so shout out. Um, good company if you're looking to go and improve your running skills. Um, have you run your absolute face off this year? Is it proven to have worked? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's made a huge difference. So I did that. Obviously, the club put in um, Kof, who's no longer here, put in a really good program, so that, that helped as well. I went up to Athletic Institute, um, what, what suburbs that in? Yeah, it's the head S and C West Perth like runs it. So a lot. Oh, of you've the, given him shout outs here. Yeah, now. so a lot yeah. of the boys like because Westies obviously comes from there, um, and then because of that Greg and then a couple of the other boys, Rothy and all the fellas have started using him throughout the off season. So he runs a pretty tight ship there as well. Yeah, so that's Corey Green. Yeah, um, but went up there and did a fair bit of stuff as well. So I was just able to get pretty fit and, and came back and absolutely smashed my PB out of the park. So the boys were just taking the mickey a bit, calling me David Goggins, but I ran with it. And, um, yeah, a few other boys went Goggins mode as well. How many chin-ups are you up to per day now? <laughs> yeah, I'm probably not David Goggins in the gym. <laughs> Running <yet>. Goggins. <laughs> Running Goggins, yeah. But, like, not understating it. So – I was thinking I was doing a little bit extra because I had a bit of off-season surgery and we went to Europe together at the end of last year. So um, we had a couple beverageinos on that trip. So we thought, you know, we'll come back and we'll get ourselves ready to go. And I was doing hot Pilates and that was my extra and I was doing it like twice a week. And Wither was also doing that with me, but he'd often go three times a week and do this extra running club. So he was going psycho for a bit. But um, as you mentioned, like you came back and – it was never a strength. Like you've always been a good game day runner, I think. But yeah, okay. time trial runner is just like a very different thing. Like yeah, being able to go yeah. and smack a 2 k and then um, probably what would have come top 10 in the club easily. Yeah. Yeah. From like someone who was pretty well middle of the pack. So, yeah, yeah it was a big off season for the S- big fella. Sounds well worthwhile. Speaking of uh, elite runners, you last time in here were with Gaffy. Bit of hand-holding. Are you sure you're going to be all right going hard solo today? 
Absolutely, yeah. Don't need him, mate. I think it was the other way around, mate. Yeah. Yeah, Gaff, you needed a hand. Yeah. Uh, Well, in the year of just absolute medical mayhem, Widow, you've been an absolute shining light of durability. Yeah, two to go, two to go, two to go. We can almost celebrate it, but just um, just missed the one game. Yeah. You've got to be proud of how the body is held up. Yeah, no, it's good. As I said, I think it sort of stemmed from that off season. The club put in a really good program, and then I was I was just able to have really good durability throughout the pre season, which helps um, sets you up for a good year. And um, yeah, touch wood, I can stay fit for these last two games. But I've only missed the one, and that's when I got slept in the derby um, in round three. Can we let's touch on that very briefly? Then <clears throat> that was uh, one of the gutsier plays of the year, going back into the unknown. Like I think Foles did it on the weekend, yeah. and got up a lot quicker than what you did. He didn't yeah. have to turn the body; he had back protection. Yeah. Um, who was it? Omira that uh, mm. sorted you out. Yeah. What were the the ramifications of that mentally and physically? Um. Yeah, so I've obviously, I mean, it happens so many times within a game. I reckon a lot of players do it, and because the outcome, I reckon I've done that, you know, 10, 15 times in my career, but haven't had the outcome, so it probably doesn't get highlighted. You might just get across and get a hand in and get a pat on the bum by a teammate. Oscar does that sort of stuff every week. You know, there's two defenders coming from the side, and he flies across the front. Um, so a lot of players do it, so I don't think it was anything – super special but it's it was just the result of it um and yeah he got me in the ribs so I had some pretty sore ribs for um probably six weeks there and yeah I got a a, a nasty concussion but I was lucky that I was sort of able to bounce back pretty quick um I I realized when I was on the ground I I couldn't breathe for probably 45 seconds it's the scariest part for me is the winding and the panic of when am I gonna breathe next I like probably was out for two or three seconds and then woke up, couldn't breathe and like I was trying to breathe and and then as I was sounds like a lot of fun. As I was coming off the ground, um, the boys still take the piss a little bit. But as I was coming off the ground, I um like something clicked in my head, like when it all started coming back together, I was like can't get subbed out here. Like Gov's already out, Shuey's already out. Like can't get subbed out. I've got to keep playing. Um got we're like we gotta win this game and got ten meters from the bench and I was like, oh can't get like carried off by the trainers so if you get the footage I've like shooed the trainers away and then like I've just been walked off the whole because I was on the far wing I've just been walked off the whole length of the field and then I've shooed them away 10 meters from the bench and then jogged off um and then told the told, told the doctors I just got badly winded and then um <laughs> unfortunately the, the vision had me snoring on the ground so I was out I was out for that the rest of that game and, and the next week it's pretty harsh you taking the mickey out of him for that boys no nah, it was pretty funny like you'll find the vision he's like walking off like this and he's genuinely like pushing him off and like all right let's go <laughs> just running off and I remember being on the bench like what's happening right now yeah. and his man's already gone on because he's like being knocked out so like they were out, allowed the interchange yeah um the Funny thing, it's not funny, but afterwards, so obviously concussion, big issue. But for the next four weeks, all you were saying is, God, my ribs are sore. Like yeah. That was the thing that was really hard to play with for the next six or so weeks. Yeah, yeah. My ribs were pretty well cooked for a couple of weeks there. Like just getting my arm up and like at training, any sort of contact would tickle them. Come, come game day, I was okay because you get adrenaline and all that sort of stuff. But Any cracks in there you reckon with it? Uh, no, I don't think so. Like sometimes if you just get bruised ribs, it's almost worse. It's almost worse, yeah. Um, do you put any padding there? I'm sure it does nothing when contact hits, but for mental well-being, did you I put just, something there? No, nah, I, don't, I, I don't like um, – I like – playing as naturally as I can so last year I had my shoulder and I had um, my shoulder taped and it just I just found like it irritated me so I ended up just not getting a tape for the rest of the year and just whatever Um, so I like to play with as little tape as possible on me real proud achievement knocking over 100 games against the Bombers not the outcome we wanted but did you reflect on that at any stage either prior during leading up a good tick off in terms of the career milestone. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it's something that I'm really proud of, actually. Um, you know, some for some players, it's just something they tick off so easily, and then other players, it's something they've got to work really hard to to achieve. And I feel like, um, you know, my career started pretty smooth sailing for the first year or two there, but since then, I've had to work really hard to to earn every game and. Um, yeah, to, to continue my career. So to be able to get to 100 games is a massive achievement for me, but um, not content, still wanting to play a lot more and um, 
at the end of the day, like one of my old teammates, Clay Beams, always said, don't count your games, make your games count. So Ooh, like oh, it. Um, that. <laughs> there's no point playing 100 if you're going to play 100 crap ones. So, um, yeah, just just play as many good ones as you can and, and that's what you'll be remembered for more than how many games you actually play. And I think Nick's just retired. He's probably a good example. He, he played a 210 or whatever he played. Um, but I reckon 180 of them would have been pretty good. So he'll be remembered as, you know, like a 300-game player, 350-game player in people's minds. What I was most thankful of was the game against the Ruse on 99 games. You've pulled out two or three of your career best moves to just slide into your sweet little milestone video. So you sold yeah. some monster candy on the wing, yep. like saving goal spoils uh, on the line. I was like, mate, he knew that a video needed to be made in less than <laughs> you know, 48 hours and he's delivered for me. Yeah, no, thanks for putting that video together. It was, it was really appreciated. The question for you, Thumper, so obviously with those first 59 games at Brizzy, how did you go about deciphering West Coast and Brizzy videos? Because the first, like, say it's a two and a half minute video, the first two minutes were all West Coast, and then you put like him kicking a banana from forty five from Brizzy, and like that was it. I didn't, I didn't know whether someone like Simo or a, an assistant coach would tap me on the shoulder and say, "Mate, you don't put any of like a previous club highlights in a highlight video." Like I had to go and check, hey. Can I put like a couple of Brizzy? You, you actually had to ask that. Well, question. I didn't have to, but I wanted to rather than get. Who'd you check with? Simo was in the lunchroom making a coffee. I was like, "You can do it. You can do it. Go. Just go. Just go talk to him. Just go clear it off. Like, <laughs> We've been here fifteen years. Go what, and what did he say? He was like, oh, man, I don't care. It's, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> he would have hated I, it. I think that's just. <laughs> I think that's just the least of his worries. Like yeah. you're, you're playing that it, up in your head. It, it, like, nah, trust me. I've been clipped for so much worse <laughs> things than that. So like, I just wanted like, to make sure someone green lit it. Yeah. And was like, it's fine to have that in there. Because I remember I remember Josh Hill, I got told when Hilly played a milestone, I was like, mate, don't put his Bulldogs goals in there. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, I was like, all good. That's when the boys used to be top four. Um, <laughs> like, it was the little things that mattered at the moment where folk, like, we've got a lot going on. <laughs> big rocks, mate, not little rocks. <laughs> yeah. Well said. All right, we had a, he was speaking of the big fella. He called time on the career yesterday. Got a few questions for you boys. So mm -hmm. that's three on the trot now, three weeks in a row. Three club legends have bid farewell. How did you find the retirement speeches to players? Who wore it best? How were the emotions for all three? Um, bloody heavy Mondays at the moment. Like every Monday coming in. And I think we were joking the other day, if you include Kenners from last year, four of our top 10 players in the history of the football club have now left. So leaves a pretty big gap. All like senior leaders, our last two captains of the footy club. So um, there's definitely big shoes to be filled. But I think... Without being disrespectful to the others, Nick's yesterday was like the best retirement speech I've, I've ever seen because it had a mixture of, like he's a pretty closed off guy, Nick Nat, in a way, like he's great around the fellas, but he's had a bloody tough life, but he keeps that on the back burner. Like, you know, he doesn't talk to you about that just because of the nature of who he is. So he brought up some of that stuff that, like I've known him for seven years and he hasn't said any of that stuff ever. And then would come out with the funniest jokes ever 10 seconds later. So it was a really good contrast. Bunger was very just like down the line, Shannon Hearn. Yeah, just thanking Pritta for some reason. Just saying like, <laughs> yeah, Pritta, Pritta had a great career. It's like, mate, yeah. we're talking about your retirement. Bunger, um, was, Bunger was just deflecting off himself as much as he could, like, yeah. like he always has. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, Boots was probably a mix between the two. Uh, like some of them, <clears throat> I thought, yeah, I suppose, without being disrespectful, some guys you probably think, oh, they might be coming to an end. So I found Boots as one pretty difficult because um, I thought he might go another year, whereas the other two I was kind of um, thought, yeah, their time might be about up to be called. So that hit me pretty hard. Um, was Nick the least emotional of the three? Probably, yeah. yeah. Oh, I reckon he was almost the most with some yeah. of the stuff he was saying about. Yeah, he had his moments. Yeah. Um, Mate, they were all pretty pretty good. Like mm. they held it together well. Were you in the Nick one? No, that's the only one I haven't seen. Oh. Fans will get a chance to see the best parts of this, by the way. We're just slowly gonna leak them out. Nick, so Nick's was exceptional. Like yeah. the other the other boys did a cracking job, but Nick's is, as Ozzy said, the best I've ever seen. Like had us all in stitches. Um a lot of inside jokes though, so I'm not sure. 
Yeah, <laughs> people not, watching will get I'm it. I'm not sure how many people will resonate with them, but yeah. I mean, a lot of the fans probably know more about the club than we do, so they'll probably be able to resonate more than I think. I'll ask you for what you, some of your best memories are of Nick Nat, but um, him dropping in the press conference that his uncle is Vulcan from Gladiators. I don't know if you guys are a bit too young to remember the sensation that was Sunday night Gladiators on TV. Vulcan was the man. And he's dropped that he was picking him up from school. I was like, oh, I don't know that. That was amazing stories. No, I, I don't know. I don't know this. Tell me. That's all he said. He said, Vulcan's yeah, my, my uncle. Yeah, that's, that's shock. I, did, I didn't watch Gladiators. Um, grew up with Foxtel. Must be nice. So, <laughs> yeah. Didn't watch We're a lot of... Um, wear, mate. Didn't watch a lot of free to wear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was on around Man Oh Man. Do you ever know what that show was? No. Nah, like I, think, we, I think you're going too deep for yeah, it. I don't yeah, think yeah, we okay. were... The, the concept of Man O' oh Man was 10 blokes were pitching to like be the date for a woman and they'd do talent shows and oh, like, that sounds like the worst then the, 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 gimmick, <laughs> the gimmick was they'd line up on a pool and the way they got eliminated is they'd have a model come past and push them in the pool and they'd either push you in the pool or not Oh, yeah, nice. Right. That's, That's how you survived, yeah. Um, Nick says a lot of crazy things like that sometimes like he'll just because Nick Nat is Nick Nat like he's a genuine celebrity. Like I don't know many AFL players who he could go anywhere in the world almost and people would look at Nick Nat and be like that guy is probably famous, just like the way he carries himself. And we were talking about, um, so to that point, like Nick just has so many stories and those so many people. Mm. And I don't know if this is speaking out of school, but you can cut it if I am. But he was, we were talking about a DJ the other day, Joel Fletcher, like, you know, Joel Fletcher, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Aussie DJ, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. And we were just talking about the change room and Nick just like pipes up across the room going, oh, he's pretty loose. And we're like, oh yeah. How do you know him? He goes, oh, yeah, he's a massive Collingwood fan. Like, we made a bet, like, before the grand final, like, whoever wins has to get a tattoo or something. So now he's got, like, a massive eagle on his chest. And I was like, what? Yeah. Like, he's just got, like, all these little stories and yeah. about with all these famous people. And he's just, yeah, he yeah. knows everyone. Like, you'll be like, oh, just talking about some, like, ridiculous celebrity in America, say, like, LeBron. He's like, oh, yeah, when I did my knee, like, I met him on um Fourth of July party, like it was a good night. I was like, sorry, you're not yeah. just gonna skim past like what do you mean? He's like, Oh yeah, like I met Kanye there and, and Kim Kim Kardashian was there as well, but like she had her groups that were a bit to, and he's just going through like listing off the biggest like A list celebrities you could ever imagine. Yeah. And Nick Nat I reckon is one of the only blokes I've I'll ever meet that just is like on their level in terms of everyday life, particularly here in Australia. I'd never met Nick before, and I did the grand final footy show in 2018. Did you do a song and dance? I no, did. Dance. Actually, no, just a dance. Yeah, 2019, so it was. Um, and Nick, was Nick fit that year, or was he coming off his ACL? Uh, he, yeah, he played the back half that year, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, anyway, and we are at the after party for the grand final footy show. Like, it was just people that... <laughs> Performed in the show and, you know. What did you perform? Uh, Old Town Road. <laughs> um, <laughs> Find the footage. <laughs> oh, I have to. Yeah. yeah. I, I, Good kits? Yeah, like full cowboy kits. <laughs> but we're just like standing there like in the back, like head nodding. And uh, Mitch Robertson was the star of our show. Um, <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah. But we had our after party and it was just like players that were there and, and, and it's TV personalities that were there. And anyway, Nick walks in. Um and everyone sort of stops and turns. And he has a posse of about 20 just following him in, like all his mates. Mm. like. And then he sits down, like someone goes and gets him a drink and like it's impossible for anyone to get to him because they're all just like sitting around surrounding him. So if that was the first time I saw a footballer look like a proper celebrity. Uh, saw Cuzzy came along to the press conference. Didn't yeah. see him at the other two. The great man. Yeah. Played with Bunger, but yeah. go along to Nick's. Well, I think... Well, the big thing popped up when he was Nick was in the ALS, right? And he came and trained here with Cuzzy, and then Cuzzy obviously left during that period, and then Nick was the big number nine replacement. And uh, Lawns actually asked me last night, who's going to get number nine next? And now it's going to be a big shoes to fill because two people I can only ever recall wearing number nine. I know way back when, but in my lifetime, Ben Cousins and Nick Nanui. So uh, heavy weight on the shoulders, whoever has to put that jumper on next year. Yeah. I mean, what's your tip? You, you want it? Nah, nah. I mean, uh, you know, we're going to win our last two games, so we won't have the number one pick. But whoever our first pick is, sounds like it's going to be a pretty good player. So w wouldn't retire any of those numbers for a year. Oh, um, I, re uh, I reckon twenty-five. Twenty-five in the rafters. Twenty-five would probably get yeah. retired for a year or so. Mm. Yeah. Um, cool. I reckon if you do one, you do all of them. 
yeah, for a year. Potentially. Yeah. So what like, does the top pick get? What's left? We get you can have Ken who's seventeen because yep. he's been retired for a year potentially. Yeah. Something yep. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah, they probably all deserve to be retired, really. They're club icons, club greats. <laughs> Two get retired and one doesn't. Yeah. So. <laughs> Was not a fan of Nick Nat's opening line of the presser. He's ragged the tune that got played with his video. A bit of P. Diddy, Be Missing You. He's requested that tune. So that he's is like, such a Nick thing. Oh, it is. So he's like, get me that song. And the, and the editors are like, mate, are we really going to make this work? Yeah. Done it. And then he's potted it in the opening line. I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah. Nick, yeah. you're too good. That was part of his gag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Teed it up. Would you rather, I'm going to throw this at you, with though. Would you have rathered uh, at his stage of his career – his torn Achilles or the broken leg he got that Tim Taranto delivered? Uh, broken leg. I think, I think, I'm not sure if people understand, but a torn Achilles is a massive like rehab thing. Mm. Like it's 12 months and with no guarantee that at that age, especially like that you're going to ever be the same player and have the same power. And, um, and then you, you probably got the fear of, acceleration and taking off and it happening again whereas like a broken leg as much as it sucked and whatever like it's it was meant to be this monster broken <laughs> leg though it, wasn't it just, was a monster broken leg yeah. so um but it's probably like a more six to eight month thing compared to 12 months yeah like every time you're taking a step with a torn achilles you're thinking is this going to snap again like it, that's what i assume as soon as you get out of the moon boot so like i wouldn't wish out on anyone i think that's par with like ACL is the, the yeah, two like it's almost worse yeah yeah probably worse can we have a real brief chat about the Matildas game on Saturday night and how that all played out in terms of you boys heading out warming up uh, you know coming out of the eagle head while it was still playing so it seems like Optus Stadium were kind of adapting on the fly as to how they, they were a good job <laughs> yeah I thought they did a great job they did in the end because you have a look at some efforts like the Gabba didn't put it on on the oval after the game when they're all doing kick to kicks. They didn't have it on the big screen, but they had it on little mini screens around the ground. Okay, yep. And then the MCG shut it down with 40 minutes left in the pregame. 40 minutes to bounce, mm, yeah. and they shut it right off the screens. Yeah. yeah. All my mates were at the – because they're Melbourne supporters, and they were at the G, and they reckon – Half the stands were empty because everyone was in the sports bars around the G just watching the Matildas. So I'm not sure that's what the AFL would have wanted. Mm. Well, the interesting part around the Optus one was that we were going for a penalty to save the game at the same moment that Frio ran out and they yeah, right. and, and they cut off the big screen at the moment where we we're like, oh, my God. And then the crowd has booed. Mm. And like you, you know, wouldn't have anything to do with the free plays right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was this is what I mean. Like it's an Eagles home game. Like the people upstairs, Kojo Productions, were like, "Well, are they booing because it's free? Are they booing because we just took it off?" We're going to say the latter. Mm. So then it's come back and it's still going. So we're like, "Oh, we we made the penalty. Okay, yeah, we're right. still alive." Yeah. And then when you guys ran out, they didn't switch it on the big screen, and we're like, "Right now, they're really adapting on the fly." Yeah. So in a warm up, we have a kick to kick. Um, in partner kick for maybe 45 seconds to a minute and then we break off into our lines and our line has a massive focus of switching on and um, <laughs> like doing our three or four minutes as a line like with intensity, like focusing in, dialing in because we feel like when we do that well, we play well. Um, so I was doing my best to not look at the big screen and our line coach is there and I, I, I could see him just – watching us to see whether we're dialed in or whether we're watching the big screen. So I, I didn't really look at the big screen and I was trying to get others not to as well, but um, whenever there was a loud roar, you just saw everyone's head just <laughs> swivel straight up to the big screen. It's funny the difference between a forward and a back because you guys are doing like, I'm doing goal kicks, so I'm just standing at the top of my mark staring at the big screen for like a minute and then just like snapping one over my shoulder and, and continuously doing that. But uh, like, because we had the minutes of silence, for the uh, police. That was the part that they were most nervous about because in yeah. the end they would have had to regardless turn it off to go to a minute yeah. silence and you could imagine what the crowd uproar was would have been pretty disrespectful mm. to have booing leading into a memorial yeah. minute silence. Yeah. But and, was- and that speaks to the difference between forwards and backs. You know, they <laughs> they can just sit there and do whatever Stuff they around. want because they know if they're not switched on in the first five minutes they can't look like an idiot out there. Whereas if we're not switched on we're bloody getting dragged or we're costing us goals or... But he's Sophie Toll from Dandenong's messaging you on Instagram. So 
Whereas a forward, you just got to turn up and kick your two goals like Oscar's done all year and you've had a good day. I can uh, attest to that because when <laughs> I went back, it was very different. To when I was up forward, my mentality was squeaky bump time. <laughs> After your duties here this afternoon, Widow, you're going to Christchurch, PSA land, doing a bit of coaching. Can you tell us yep. how that's going down? Yeah, good. I'm actually really enjoying it. I uh, started at the latter part of last season. Um, so... Rob Wiley's a previous Christchurch coach down there and, and um, uh, Tex Perkins, who's at one of our physios, does a bit of work. So they got me in the door and, um, yeah, just go down there on a Tuesday afternoon after training, um, kick a few footies in, try and pass on a bit of knowledge that I've learnt over my time in the system. And, um, yeah, then this – and then on game day I get down whenever I can to just help uh, – yeah, give a helping hand. Surely the injection of a veteran AFL player into this program has risen them to great heights within the competition. They'd be winning it this year, wouldn't they? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> uh, three and eight. Um, Sorry, that's that's three wins. Three wins, eight losses. Right. Um, what are you doing down there? Mate, first rule of coaching, you can only deal with the players you've got. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've only made it to one game day this year. <laughs> you win it? And we won by a point. And... That we've played that same team and I wasn't there and we lost by 50. So 50. You tell me the difference. 51 point turnaround. <laughs> but no, um, it's a pretty good competition, uh, pretty high level, and there's pretty high level of coaching throughout the competition. So there's a lot of previous um, ex AFL players within the other schools. So I don't think referring to me as a veteran is is quite right at this stage. And there's a, there's a lot more experienced guys down there, probably on a more full time basis. But Christchurch do a really good job and Declan down there is doing a really good job. You don't need to tell me, mate. Only the best can win an Elko Cup. Righto. As you can see, Widow is dressed in different kit. Yeah. How, what happened have there? No, sorry. We had a team meeting, but we're back. Okay. We are back. Feel good? Uh, no, but we're back. Well, how did you go on the team meeting? Rate your performance out of 10? Uh, it wasn't a team meeting. It was just a line meeting. Rate your performance? Uh, well, I just didn't say a thing, so I just stood in there and... <laughs> I mean, I didn't have any negative clips, so that's 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 a positive. That's not bad. Yeah. Didn't didn't have many positive ones either, though. So about a five then. <laughs> yeah. Right. Fan question time. Yeah. Oz, why don't you open the bowling for a change? All right. We've got one from <coughs> Kalen underscore Lamb, and this is a topical discussion because you, myself, and Andrew Gaff, um, we're a bit of a threesome. We like to talk about all things sports, and yep. I'm the representative of WA. In the group chat. Like, Correct. We talk a lot about the cricket. I'm WA biased. Yep. A question for you, Queensland or WA? Because obviously you're from Victoria, but you spend a lot of time mm. in Queensland. Uh, so I grew up in Geelong, 18 years, spent four years in Brizzy, and then I've had three years here. God. Did you meet you could upset misses? a lot of people here. Yeah. <laughs> Better half in Queensland or from Queensland, right? Yeah. We'll just try and put that on the back burner. Don't yeah. let that sway. I think... I think WA, um, because in Perth, you're closer to the beach. Like in Brisbane, where I was, um, it wasn't quite near the beach. But I think I'll probably end up back in Queensland eventually more so because that's where my partner's from. Um, How do you feel about that? Not home and not in the better place. You're going for the uh, bronze well, medal of your existence. Well, home, uh, it's closer to home, so it's easier for my family. Um, her family's there and we've got a lot of friends, friends there and she's got a lot of friends there. So, mm. um, yeah, but. Pretty lucky to have lived in three great places. Tommy Cole, why do they call you Picasso? Ah, uh, <laughs> that's just uh, yeah, it's just a little inside joke between the boys. Um, <laughs> no comment. I don't, I don't want to go into it. All right, well <laughs> said. All right, I've got one from the underscore J underscore Jaden. Why did Ben Sockol punch you in the jaw at Optus last year? Um, I I was lipping him. About something. Big boy. Oh, he, He's a big boy. Yeah. He was uh, he was like telling me I was no good. Um, and you've and I just played 21 I, games this year. I, I, just, I was just laughing because I don't remember him ever being on an AFL field ever. No. <laughs> so um, that was pretty easy to get back into him. What hanging fruit there. Fluffy Simba 101, who is your favourite teammate? Don't name a Brizzy Lion player. <laughs> Teammate is in person, like mate, or is in to play with? You no, no, not to play with because I reckon that's to come. So just you know, yep. favorite hang. Ah, uh, favorite hang. Um, Aussie be up there at, at West Coast. Um, probably Roth. Mm. Yeah, Roth always good, light-hearted fun. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, now we'll go. Who's your favourite teammate to play with? George uh, Georgie Lindsay asked that one. Uh, so I'll go one at each club. Mm. Hodgie at Brisbane. King. Um, learnt so much off him. Was a young fella, uh, learning my craft, and he taught me taught me so much and a lot of um, like one of my strengths I feel is being able to use my brain and communicate and help others on the field and I, I learned a lot of that from him and then there's probably another absolute icon of the game in Shannon Hearn at, at West Coast very very similar in his ability to teach younger players and, and make other players better and um, yeah pretty lucky to have played it with two of the absolute greats of the game. Fair, fair duo there. Mm. <laughs> Emma Roberts, three. Favourite memory other than the derby? Uh, uh, sorry, favourite memory other than your debut? <laughs> Let's not derby. go back to the derby. Yeah, I was like, derby, hang on. Uh, favourite memory other than debut? Um, God. What about your I'll little give around the back and uh, I'll send one from 50 deep? Yeah, that was good personally, but I'm trying to think team wise. Um, like the win we had against Collingwood last year down at Marvel mm. in round four um, was pretty special because we we had maybe twelve of our best players out. They were going pretty well, um, and we just everything went right, and we just yeah we just played out of our skin that day. We were able to win. Collingwood finished second and. We obviously won two games for the year, so that was that was a pretty good game. Um, yeah, in twenty twenty one, my my debut for West Coast against Collingwood on a Friday night was was pretty cool. Fifty five thousand, so I hadn't played in a home game with that many people because um, obviously the Gabba doesn't f- um, have that many seats. So that was pretty cool. Watch watch Aussie kick five, JD kick five. So that was a pretty night. cool night. Yeah, yeah. going to the Gabba I away think, change rooms yet since you've been playing for West Coast? Yeah, a and how much times. of a debacle that oh, is? Oh, they're shocking. Like. Did, no wonder the gab is getting dozed. Is that the mental wins against the Lions? Have been like, boys, look what they're dealing with over there. They're a rabble. Yeah, you can see the pipes in the. You can see the pipes in the roof. What a disgrace! Yeah, because you can see the pipes in the roof in the home team. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, that's right. the thing. Like when I was at the Lions, I think well, I don't know if we touched on this last time, but the players area, the gym, like that whole little football department area, just smelled like sewage. Like ninety percent of the time, like we would walk in there, and I'd, I just became accustomed to it, but. You'd come back after the break or you'd have a few days away and you'd realise how bad it smelled, but you just became used to it. <laughs> Very good. All right. I've got one. Um, what would you do if you weren't an AFL player from Zoe Anderson? And what are you doing now away from footy? <sighs> I think I'd just be a house husband. Um, house husband? Let Grace run the ship? Grace can go get that bread. Um, Investment banker? Yeah. Yeah. She's- No problem. Yeah. She's doing pretty well for herself. Can't she pick him. She- um, <laughs> Nah, she's a really hard worker. She, yeah, she is committed to her job, so she, she's doing well. But um, what would I do if I wasn't a footballer? Um, I'm not really sure because I don't know what I'm going to do after footy yet. But <laughs> what about a curator? Nah, Go look after some grounds. Nah, prepare would, some pitches. Doctor some pitches. Nah, yeah, yeah, that would be cool. But in a way, Christchurch would win a game, man. That's for sure. Yeah, uh, maybe somewhere in like the finance sort of section somewhere. Uh, I'm not sure where. Maybe. Maybe in consulting somewhere. Um, no one really can explain to me 100% what consulting is. but It's always a good start. <laughs> yeah, but it sounds like there's a bit of everything in it, a bit of relationships, a bit of people skills, a bit of um, decision making. So, yeah, that, that, something like that might interest me. Go talk to Tommy Cole, buy low, sell high at mm-hmm. ASX. Yeah. He's got all the tips for you. Yeah. Coley does. No, I remember he wrote that on his Twitter page. Buy low, oh, sell yeah. high. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He went through a rogue like 10-day patch there, didn't he? <laughs> we love discussing yeah, we, it. We yeah. did bring this up last week. Yeah. Thumpalicious. Worth a follow. <laughs> Who are you recruiting from the club for the next National Lampoon's European vacation? Uh, so who have you seen? What have you liked the look of from maybe some of the young crop? So or- outside of the group that went last year, Clearly. yeah. Um, so a refresher last year, it was myself, Oz, X. Harry Edwards. Harry Edwards, Roth, Jacko and Jake. Jake. Yep, yep, so that was seven of us. Um, who do I like? I think out of the young boys, Noah Long would be. Yeah, Donkey. Yep, You'd be like good. a clear favourite. Um, just easy going, always got a smile on his face, like. Brings a bit of energy. Um, oh, who else? 
No European vacation this year, Oz. No. Nah. You'll be lucky to get out the front door. I'll yeah. be there. Yeah, with those going back, but not me. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Just a couple's one this time? Yeah, yeah. Just Grace and I off to Italy for three weeks, which should, which should be good. So Decent. Um, Bit of a different vibe on the trip in terms of uh, yeah, I the dare, demand. I dare, say, yeah. I dare say I'll come back a bit more well-rested this year, <laughs> um, which would be nice. Very good. Well, I reckon that brings us to the end. Oz, you got anything to offer up? Um, talk to us about your new car, mate. Living the high life now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I actually yeah, didn't have much of a say. So I went down to the car dealership to um, to buy a RAV4. So I've, I've been talking to a few of the boys. I'm like, hybrid, how good, like long life. Doing your thing for the, the world. Yep. Yeah, yeah, save the environment, all that sort of stuff. And um, my partner, um, and traditionally, Early in our relationship, I probably had a lot of say over like financial decisions because you're still at uni and, um, you know, when you're in an early stage of relationship. But now it's oh, the the cards have been flipped, haven't they? Well, now, yeah, I, I think that was a bit of the changing of the guard. So uh, we walked in there and she made the decision and we rolled out with a with a little Merc. So um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, there wasn't that much of a difference in price, so it wasn't like I bowled out. It's only a small one. Is it a good ride? Yes, yeah, it is good. But it'll probably end up being her car. Um, Smart from her. Yeah. That's but that's like, all right. That's, um, that's like Lorna. We were driving. Um, I've got the club, and thanks for a great sponsor to Audi. Um, there's yeah. some great Audis rolling around the football club. And um, and Lorna. that's why I had to get the Merc just to fit in in the, the Audi garage <laughs> downstairs. <laughs> and, uh, and Lorna was really keen on a RAV4, but now she's got her eyes on a, a Q model of an Audi. So um, these things happen. They do. Yeah. Hey, Witho, thanks for coming back twice in the morning. That's all right. You guys yeah. got a bit on, flying out and, and all, so I appreciate your time. Thanks very much to uh, Tab Touch for being on board for another episode of Coast to Coast, and that'll do us all the best. Bulldog Sunday, boys. Thanks, mate. Thanks very much. Go well. Cheers. Go on, yeah.